We receive your word this morning, Lord. We receive your word this morning, Lord. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, Lord. Establish the work of our hands. And Father God, we pray to you to teach us to number our days, to grow in faith, grow in grace, and come to a deeper understanding from you, Lord. You are the breath that I breathe, faith that I express, joy and peace that I believe. Like Jacob, we refuse to let you go. And like Moses, show us your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. For you bless the righteous, O oh Lord, and you cover them with favor, like a shield. And all we want is you. You are the reward of our worship. Sanctify us with your truth, Lord. Sanctify us with your truth, Lord. Speak like us, Lord. And you enable us with favor, pleasing in your sight, your will, your purpose, your truth. Holy Spirit! Holy Spirit! If we keep drawing closer to you, Lord, helping us to come against this flesh, those lies, that uncertainty, that lack of knowledge of our faith, that cause us to suffer. Mercy, Lord. But you are the God, the same God that brought us out that darkness. The last time and the last time. And we thank you, Father God, for deliverance, repentance, helping us to see no way. Favor. Open up your heart, church, and see the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Working in us and not against us. You are the Lord of our minds, Lord. The Lord of our souls, Lord. The Lord of our families, Lord. The Lord of us. Bless the Lord on our souls for his grace. And we pray to you for favor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Receive our worship, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. May we keep on reaping the mercy this morning, Lord. May we keep on reaping the mercy, Lord. We pray out to you. Enjoy. In your promises, Lord. Don't stop the will of all the lives, Lord. Speak unity, Lord. Shut down any kind of deceit. Any kind of division, Lord. Any kind of mixing up of families, Lord. It's been too much this morning, Lord. You open up our eyes this morning to see another blessed day. So maybe rejoice. Be glad in it. Be glad in it. No satisfaction, Lord. No satisfaction, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Miss Paul. Let us stay right there. Right there. In you. Speak to our minds, Lord. Speak discipline to our minds, Lord. With your love that never fails, Lord. Your love, your love, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. Thank you for all those who have chimed in. You know what? I'm excited about Jesus on this morning. And as I heard one preacher say, this is not a put on. It's what I call a come on. The Bible says it is like rivers of living water that flows through your very being simply because that you are part of the kingdom. We're going to dive into the heart of the word of God on this morning. Morning. If you have your phones and your Bibles, I'm just going to encourage you to take this journey with me on this morning. Uh-huh. Turn with me to 1 Timothy 6 and 10. In Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 10th, the 16th, and the 17th verses. Again, those passages are 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, in the 10th verse. Then we're going to Ephesians. Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 10th, the 16th. We're going to go to the uh, 17th verse. First and 1 Timothy 6 and 10, it says, Fight the good fight. Of faith. Lay hold unto your eternal life. Mm, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Next. Ephesians 16, the 16th and the 17th verse, it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The 16th verse says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the, which is the word, the word of God. My topic on this morning is simple. It is just titled The Good Fight of Faith. The Good Fight of Faith. And if you know that you're in the good fight of faith, give God a hand clap on this morning. Last week, we dealt with the two characteristics of a soldier. Number one, he is a father of that. He's familiar with his leader's voice. He's a follower, and he's familiar with his commander or his leader's voice. But today, I want to deal with two things here. He's a fighter, and he is faithful. Two characteristics of a soldier is that he is a fighter, and he is faithful. Entering the kingdom at conversion is a miracle moment. When you come into the kingdom, that is a miracle moment. It is simply because you didn't put yourself in the kingdom. But it was the power of God. The Bible says no man could come to God unless the spirit of God draw him. Becoming like Christ is a word of a lifetime. It don't happen overnight. 
in order to be conforming to the image of God's dear son, that's the work of a lifetime. No three things kingdom reality is. Number one, it's a war. Second, the power to win is available. In other words, that power is already in us. As many as received him, gave you power to become the sons of God. And third, we have to appropriate that power. We have to appropriate the power through the word of God. When you're reading the word of God, believe it or not, what you're developing is an attitude of faith. And you're not only uh, obtaining the attitude of faith, but you are appropriating his promises over your life. Every kingdom has an army. Jesus alluded to this military meaning in his answering Pilate's question about what has Jesus done. When Jesus was living full Pilate, he asked him a question. Hey, what you what, what, what you about? What you doing? You know, why are all these people following you? And in St. John, the 18th chapter in the 36th verse, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my service, what they were basically doing, they would fight. They would be fighting that I might not be delivered, be delivered to the Jews. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel my company keep up. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. My kingdom is not of this world. I don't have a natural kingdom because it's not of this realm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus did not say he didn't have a kingdom in this world because he had, he did, he had kingdom citizens who trusted in him and yield to his sovereignty. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, what you're basically doing, your life is dedicated to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, you're going to pay homage to his authority, his kingship. Can somebody say amen? And in, that, in the kingdom of God, the faithful Christian life, I'm here to tell you, is a battle. I said the faithful, when you really love the Lord and you're serious about the things of God, the faithful Christian life is a battle. It is a spiritual warfare on a grand scale. Why? Because as God begins to bless you, Satan begins to attack you. I don't think you're listening to me on this morning, so I better say that again. So the reason why it's on a grand scale is because as God begins to bless you, how did he bless me, uh, Pastor Roy? He took you out of darkness and brought you into his marvelous life, uh, having you to escape uh, the wrath of God. And that is a blessing. Uh, but you, you might say, uh, wait, wait a minute, Pastor, what do you mean? It's a blessing. Uh, I guarantee you, if there's anybody you know that's on the brink of death, and they're beginning to uh, assist that transition from earth to heaven. It is a blessing if they're a saint of God, knowing to be absent for the body is to be present in the evil of us, is to be present with the Lord. Because as God begins to bless us, Satan begins to attack us. Now, Paul begins in verse 10 in chapter 6 of Ephesians with the word finally. Finally, be strong in the law. That's what he's encouraging us to do as believers. He's telling us if you want to experience all the benefits from the first chapter to uh, chapter 6, 
and nine, there's gonna have to be some type of fighting. That's right. Okay? That's gonna put in the midst of a fight. The word family means that he is drawing things to a close. Mm. Family is wrapping it all up. However, before uh, Paul speaks to us, before Paul tells us any, uh, anything about an armor, he admonished us to do two things. Before he tells us to put on the armor of God, there are two things he tells us to do. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, be strong, number one. And number two, he says, put on. Notice, he tells us to be strong before he tells us to put on. Before he tells us to put any spiritual Weaponry on. He tells us, okay, brace yourself because you got to be strong. Glory be to God's name. Mm. And his first instructions are to be strong, which means to be able. A strong person has been empowered. So he is able. It's to have power. The word described as power that overcomes resistance. I guarantee you, if I had an opportunity to speak with each and every one of you, there's some type of resistance that you are experiencing on this journey of life. Mm. A power that overcomes resistance and effects a change. When a person is, is strong and they're going through something, some type of uh, fact, they're going to win out. They're going to win out on that situation by uh, being affected to change. Instead of them let that thing take them under, they say, no, no, no. I'm holding to the rock of Gibraltar and I'm going to change. I'm not going to let this thing take me under. Can you say amen? To be enabled or be empowered inwardly. This don't have anything to do with the exterior. So the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. In other words, they are natural. When this empowerment that I am talking, sharing with you on this morning, it's talking about inward power. Just like the scripture says, as many as receive them, they keep power. Dunamis work, wondering working power. So when we get saved, uh, the ability, God, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us uh, and He enables us to do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Can you say amen? I feel this thing on this morning. It is the power that's working on the inside of us. Amen. Be empowered inwardly. Or in another way of saying it is to put power in. Like putting gas in your car. You don't put gas in your car. I don't care you how you press, turn the key on and press that accelerator. That car is not going anywhere. But just as soon as you put some gas in it, it has been empowered to move. This is the same format in basic military military training. When a, when a civilian goes to the material uh, to the military, he has to be trained. Armed services changes you before it puts a weapon in your hand. Before a soldier is given a gun. Or showed how to fire a missile. He goes through basic training. One, one great purpose for basic training is to build the recruit mental and physical straight up. Because he's used to the civilian life. 
and have uh, became comfortable in uh, the civilian-like ways. Therefore, uh, Uncle Sam is saying, before I put my stamp of approval on you, I got to take you through some training. One great purpose is to build up that recruit mental strength. Because when you are, are over in a foreign land, and if things get a bit 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 dark for you, you're gonna have to you, you're gonna have to have the mental strength as well as the physical strength in order to survive. It kind of reminds me of where I came from. They had a saying that was entitled, only the strong survive. If you're weak, you're going to get beat. Mm. Can somebody say amen? So a soldier has to have the mental and the physical strength. It's as if the army is saying, soldier, we're going to give you some of the greatest weapons and armor possible. But first, but first, we have to make sure you are strong. Mm. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That phrase, power of his might, is really talking about the ability of God. Okay? And the ability of God is what enables the believer to do what they couldn't do before they got saved. Because the spirit of God is residing down on the inside. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Now the Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of your enemies with exceedingly joy. That's the objective that a soldier has to meet in this good fight. Oh my God. So the spiritual warfare involves two essential components. First, you must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then you must put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> you got you to gotta be strong in the Lord. And then you got to be uh, putting on the armor of God. I mean, God is a person. That's why I often say you can't lose with what God uses. Mm. Did, did you not hear me? I said you, if you are sincere about the things of God, there is no way you can lose with what God uses, people of God. Mm. I feel my company keep them. Then, hallelujah, if you take a weak man and put the best armor. And I want you to feel me on this here. If you take a weak man and put the best armor, put the best armor on him, he still will be weak and in an in, in, in ineffective soldier. He will be easily beaten. No matter what armor is provided. I don't care if that armor fits him to the T and makes him look like uh, a big dollars. If he is weak, it can be polished to the T or closely fitted it may be. If there's no inner strength, he is a defeated individual. And that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, that strength is small. If you faint as a Christian believer, 
Will God end up allowing tribulation to knock on the door of your life? And that very thing that you've been struggling with, you've been trying to get over for years and years and years, it begins to try you. The scripture says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And as a Christian soldier, that's part of the Christian jubilee. The Bible is telling me, us that there's some criteria, there's a standard that God wants us to walk in. And that is, finally remember, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me, people? Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. So if he faint in the day of adversity, that strength is small. So equipping the Christian for combat must be must begin in being strong. I don't care how you try to get around it. Sincerity is not enough. Action. Speak louder than words. Actions. Speak louder than words. And that's why Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do it not the things I say. God wants to empower us. God wants to give us strength. God wants to take us to a place that we never been in him. Mm. So it begins with being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Therefore, a good kingdom soldier knows that he is engaged in a spiritual warfare. I don't care how you look at the reward of faith, at the end of the day, we are in a battle. That's right. That's right. Glory be to God's name. We are in a battle. And a lot of times you can recognize it when you uh, when Monday through Saturday, how the enemy is pulling on you, trying to get you to go back to that person you once was or participate in some things that you know does, that does not align up with the word of God. Now I know I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah. I know I'm gonna get in trouble telling the truth this morning. So so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell the truth anyhow. Is that all right? Glory be to God's name. Therefore, the kingdom soldier, we are involved in the spiritual warfare and understand that the only way to succeed in the fight is to be a proficient in the use of spiritual weaponry. And one of the spiritual weaponry that you guys perhaps know is the word of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, can I talk to you on this morning? As fighters, soldiers, God, whatever they have been entrusted in their care, they take care of things that has been delivered to him. They are determined to do a good job and refuse to do anything to bring disgrace and dishonor to their superiors. It's very similar to a child that has been instilled with morals and, and ethics by their parents. And that parent had told them to go to school and, you know, uh, carry yourself in a dignified way because you represent the heresies. A lot of the children, what they want to basically do is, uh, you know, do it, uh, fulfill what their parents had instructed them. Soldiers are determined. A good soldier does not retreat in the midst and face of the enemy. He does not run away from the fight. He stands his ground and fight till the battle is over. That soldier don't run away from the battle. What he basically does is he runs to the battle. Because he's wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. He realized that I'm a ser servant. And just like Mary, he realized that God, the only thing I basically want to do is please you. Therefore, I'm going to sit at your feet. 
He don't run from the battle. He runs to it. A soldier is driven. He realized that the battle, a uh, battle does not run according to his time span. But a good soldier is in the battle to finish it. Just like Joe Fraser and Muhammad Ali. When they, when, when they would get in the ring, they would have the attitude, hey, I'm going to finish this fight. And not only am I going to finish this fight, but most important, I'm going to win it. And that should be the very attitude when it comes to us serving Almighty God. We should have a winner's attitude. And the winner always want to finish. That's what winners do. They finish. Just like the Milwaukee Bucks. They had that, they had that hard series with uh, Brooklyn. Went down to the last energy. But they finished the deal. Glory be to God's name. Can somebody say amen on this morning? Glory be to God. Uh, he is dedicated. The good soldier dedicates uh, himself and, and, and keeps his own. He keeps it by living and defending the truth. Uh, that's why That's why I am so glad when the Lord saved a lot of us. Uh, we had that all in attitude. Uh, we know uh, that the streets as well as sin was not the answer. Uh, so when we got a taste of a heavenly gift, uh, I mean, when God began to uh, inject his joy in all those uh, giftings in the, on the inside of us, uh, it was that if we had entered into another realm uh, and the only thing we best wanted more was, uh, was that spiritual touch. Eva, my mama, shaka. That's why sometimes when some saints get saved, they can be saved 40 years and never lose their job because it is not about performing, but it's about that, come on, it's like rivers, rivers of living water. They're flowing. There's a flow. You know what I often say? The Christian lifestyle is a flow. And you know who's activating that flow? God, the Holy Spirit. The same characteristics are true when it comes to kingdom soldiers. All of those that I just enumerated is what we're supposed to be walking in. We should have the same attitude that David had when he went up against Goliath. He says, is there not a cause? Are you stepping into the gap for the cause on this morning? Hallelujah. Do you really love God like you say you do? Or are we just carrying on? You and I, you and I must learn the art of spiritual warfare. If we intend to succeed for the glory of the Lord. Now let me just pause here. There is some glory that God wants to expose all of our lives to. That's right. That eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. Neither has it entered into the heart the things that God has prepared for those that love him. That's a greater glory, my friend, that God wants to expose to us all. And one of the questions is, how bad do you want it? How bad do you actually want to experience the authenticity Mm. We're in a spiritual battle. And did you not know a soldier, a soldier, and I want you to feel me on this one. A soldier, glory be to God's name, is trained to take apart and put the, back together his weapon 
in the dark. Amen. A soldier has been trained to put together as well as take apart his weapon in the dark. Would you think about that? Yeah. That, that, that? That's a dream of revelation. Here we are, the Bible speaks as uh, being in the kingdom of darkness. And here we are, the children of light, walking in a dark world. And what God is saying to us, that's more than the spirit that you have, you should be able to utilize it at any given time. Whatever particular issue of life that's trying to woo you or entice you or pull on you or take you to a place that you shouldn't be, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things. Think on these things. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, that's right there. If the battle is in my minds, people. Just like Jesus in, 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 in the garden, in, in the wilderness, when the enemy, the spirit of the Lord led him in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That was a mental, it was a spiritual warfare, but he was active in his mind. If you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. It's a response. It is written. The sword of the spirit. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So let me do the moonwalk. But a soldier is able to put his weapon together in the dark. Mm. What's your point, Pastor? What's your point, Pastor? I said that to say this. Even during the dark attacks from the enemy, we should get behind our weapon. Amen. Amen. God, I mean, Jesus told of Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, say the desire to sit me as we. But I have prayed for you that your faith failed you not. Now, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the six, 16th and the 17th verse, it says, we see, talking about the shield of the spirit, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, we see two passages that while the other parts are, are armor, we are told to put on. But we have been given two weapons we can use. Mm. The seal of faith. The sword of the spirit. So why? Why? And how do we use the shield of faith? We are to use the shield of faith against the fiery doubts that assault our minds for the purpose of inflicting, inflicting doubt and confusion. Now this right here, what I'm about to share with you, in time past I, I said, uh, you ought to attack that which is attacking you. This is how you really can walk it out. The shield of faith against those fiery dots that assault our minds and try to create confusion and doubt. We use this shield of faith by quoting scriptures, mm, the promises of God. We got to lay hold to the promises because if you if you don't lay hold to the promises, what he's basically gonna allow you to make uh, allow you to think is that oh this is a whole lot of positive talk or fairy tale. You know, God's word don't work. And that's exactly 
when he wants to get you because doubt can begin to penetrate your mind to give you a loser's left. Yeah. Yeah. Faith in God don't work. And what I, I should basically do is just go back to do uh we'll go back to doing what I used to do. I, I need I need to take control. You know, I need to handle this. Doubt! Doubt! It confuses. But by us standing on the promises of God Hallelujah. and believing those promises just like a, a, a six-year-old on Christmas Day that comes to their parents and say, Daddy, I want a bike for Christmas. Would you buy me a bike? And as soon as that father said, yes, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm going to purchase you a bike for Christmas. That it's gold. That father, that father, that, that father's word to that child is the baby, man. Daddy gonna get me a bike. I can't wait till Christmas. Excited and everything. God has a son. We're so supposed to be when it comes to God's promises. Just remember, we're serving this individual that has all powers in his hand. The earth is the Lord and the full is there. And those that the world and those that dwell therein. Do we believe? Do we believe what we say we do? I feel the spirit of God in this place on this morning. And that's why it's imperative for us as soldiers what we have to do when it comes to the word of God, we got to memorize, memorize the word of God. Remember, memorizing the word of God allows you to become God conscious. Okay? Then we have to meditate on that. We have to meditate on the word of God. David said, I meditate day and night. Okay? Then we have to stand on them like Jesus did. Again, in uh, the wilderness when he was battling Satan. By doing this, the shield of faith protects us as it creates an attitude of obedience and movement. See, there it is. You should attack what's attacking you. In other words, God has, left, has not left us vulnerable to the enemy. Okay, we could take out we could take out the sword of the spirit, and when the enemy tells us, "Look, you're not gonna make it. Uh, nothing is gonna go right for your life." You can you 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 can take uh, the word of God and say, "The Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will He withhold from them that walk it up upright." Now, the, what, what, what that basically is doing is coming out of the scripture when the Bible said, The just shall live by faith. We're not responding uh, with our own rationality, you know, our own intellect. What we're basically doing is uh, putting that on the side and saying, Look, I'll get back to you. But right now, this is the job for the Word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God, what is going to basically do is stand. So uh, since the enemy that came at me like that, I got I got to give him something that we can't have. And that is. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, uh, join. Go ahead. This, this, this protects us. It creates an attitude of obedience and movement. It is an amazing thing when you find out that the word works. It is, it is amazing thing for you to actually feel, uh, experience God, the word of God showing up in your life and coming to pass. Instead of just constantly reading it all the time and not seeing no movement. And from this context, we know that the word of God is a spiritual weapon to be used in a battle against spiritual enemies. How, how many of us have just been probably at the, uh, at the house, you know, chilling, 
you know, enjoying herself. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a, 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 a crazy thought came to your mind. Bang, you're like, whoa, man. <laughs> What's, what, what's going on? Here you, here you are. You probably were just thinking about the Lord. You know, uh, consecrating yourself, just enjoying Jesus, enjoying your peace. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, something just ludicrous entered into your mind. That is a sign that there's a spiritual warfare. Amen. Mm. So in this context, we know that the word of God is a spiritual weapon against me. And we can use it in this. Are you using, are you using, are you using your authority? Mm. Of the spirit in the cake. When, when it says, when, when the Bible says, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Get that. The sword of the spirit is indicating the Holy Spirit origin on the word of God. In other words, uh, 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 Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirits and life. They are spirits and life. Those spirits come from the word. And the word, what is basically doing, it is it implanted in you. Then it eventually germinates. And as it germinates, It'll create fruit. I remember before I got saved, I used to, I used to always get mad, cuss, you know, walking around here just mad. What you mad about? I don't know. I'm just mad. I'm just mad, you know. <laughs> you know, upset all the time. But when the word of God end up getting a hold of my heart, saying that Jesus was the Prince of, uh, Prince of Peace, to follow peace with all men, somewhere in the shuffle, at anger. Me being upset all the time. You know, me, me, me feeling like people owe, owe me and that spirit of entitlement. Love. Mm -hmm. Because as the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is a believer's resident truth. The believer resident. In other words, God the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And he's setting up residence in you. That's right. And at, at any given time, you know, he could speak a word in due season that would in, eventually revolutionize your life. In other words, there's some things that you would have died for that were wrong. As soon as that truth is spoken in your life, all of a sudden, you're going in the opposite direction. And I'm just about through. That's why the Bible says how the Spirit of God, he'll teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. Therefore, when a soldier has been enabled, now I don't want you to feel me on this here. When that word is deposited in you, the sword of the Spirit is deposited in, in, in you. What happens is that God is going to enable he, the Holy Spirit. He's going to enable us or talk by the Holy Spirit how to use the weapon. He's going to accomplish anything that confront us on the battlefield of life. Why? Because the word of God always accomplishes God's intended purpose. That's why in uh, Isaiah 55 and 11 it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Uh, it, it shall not return unto me void, but it's going to accomplish that which pleases me. Now that right there, God is saying, look, I sent my word out for objective. And whatever your situation is, that needs deliverance, that needs transforming, that needs, you know, uh, healing. And God sent his word out and directed to your very situation. You better believe without a shadow of a doubt. God's word is not going to be turned out to your but it's going to accomplish the very thing that it needs. That's why some people, you know, uh, they, 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 they have went all in for God. 
Because they knew when they first got saved, there was a whole lot of issues that they were yet struggling with. Okay? See, salvation is not an instantaneous uh, deliverance. In, in other words, God don't uh, solve, solve all your problems at once. Okay? The sanctification process transpires, whereby we set ourselves aside and we devote ourselves to the Lord. And as we do that, God begins to zero in on those issues, just like uh, Star Wars. You're zapping, zapping, zapping. Then you look around and say, man, you know what? I don't even have a desire to party no more. I don't even have a desire to cuss no more. Man, the other day I was at home and my bedroom was just crying. I didn't know where the tears came from, but I just started crying for no reason. Spirit of God, wait, work it on you. <laughs> That's a Okay, I'm going home. We are, to, we are protecting and guarding ourselves. As I stated in the beginning, the characteristics of, of a good soldier is to guard. And in 1 Timothy 6 and 12, it admonished Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. And in Jude, the Bible says this, Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you uh, the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. <laughs> the faith that was once delivered unto the faith, uh, uh, to the saints, it's a radical faith. It's an all-in faith. It's a faith that has resolved in their mind. I shall not let anything separate me from the love of God. Even of a shot. And although, you know, that may sound like a whole lot of strong talk. There's a lot of saints here on this morning that God has brought to that point. Okay. So what we're guarding we are protecting. What we are contending against, we are guarding and protecting the truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. We are contending that all charges against us was dropped on Calvary. Amen. You're no longer guilty. The Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to do that in Christ Jesus. We're protecting the truth of who Christ Jesus is and what he represents. Why? Because you know the truth. Thank you, Lord. In closing, we do not have the luxury of neutrality. Amen. Amen. Okay? We don't have the luxury of neutrality. Monday through Friday, I'm, 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 I'm just neutral, man. You know, whatever happened, I'm, you know, it's good with me. Then on Saturday, Sundays, you know, I, I know I got to go to church. You know, and we coming back, coming back, uh, think about religious things. Okay? You know, I love the Lord, so I'm going to get up this morning. And I'm doing, I don't feel like going to church. I'm going. Okay. Neutrality. You know, uh, Sundays, we have just a high point. You know, we just kind of feel, you know, uh, man, I was really feeling that message. I felt, felt God in, in the services today. Then on Monday, it's like a downhill snow. We gradually just kind of allow the things of the world to kind of weaken our resolve. We don't have the luxury of neutrality. We must engage. We got to engage this fight. A truce with the devil. A truce would never be called. Never give up. But you think about everything that God has done for you. Even though you just might credit yourself for, for some of those things. Heaven and done. 
in your heart of hearts, you know, you know that was God. You know that you, you know that you couldn't do that without God being in your life. The Bible says in Amos 1, 6 and 1, woe unto them that are at ease inside. And know this. The power to win. In other words, the power that from some, 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 sometimes you sense. And I know, I know all of us at one point in time in our life we felt this. Felt like this. You know what? I'm, I'm much better than this. Not you and me and I are arrogant, but something down on the inside of you was saying, I know I'm much better than this. Believe it or not, God is the one. He, he placed that conviction in your heart to keep moving forward. Woe to them that are at ease inside. The power is in power. You can be as strong as you want in the Lord. And, and, and the beautiful thing about it is this. As we have said the time past, there are some people that, that are waiting on that, that soldier inside. Okay? Because when it comes to destiny, God not only has people, but he has places and things that he wants to release. You'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you down on the rest that you won't have room enough to receive. Can I talk to you? You know this. We have to appropriate that power. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, for the next, next 30 days, whatever issue that you've been struggling with, Appropriate the have, first, first and foremost, have a mind to finally be strong. Okay? And then, if you target that particular thing you've been struggling with for the next 30 days and, and proclaim the promises of God over your life regarding that thing, you know what's going to happen? Movement. Change. Change first, then movement. Everything that you need is already in you. Everything you need. Sometimes what we basically do is look outside ourselves and fall find uh, uh, other people. We'll, we'll try to, we'll, we'll try to, you know, uh, kind of, you know, escape. Yeah, you the reason why uh, this shit went. Uh, you the reason, and that's exactly what the devil wants. Us to be fighting among each other. So that unity and harmony will be in the midst of God's people. But all on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, there was on one accord and one mind. Everything you need, my point, everything you already need is inside of you. And that some people are waiting on to a lie. Finally, How does a vision put on the full armor of God? He hides and he yields. He hides. Well, well, what are you hiding from? I'm hiding in Christ Jesus because I am crucified with him. And the life I now live is not mine. I've been bought with a price. So I'm hiding and I'm yielding. One of the most important ways to hide. It's God's word in our heart. As if our very lives depended on it. We yield our rights. I'm, not, I'm, I'm no longer a metonymous. Uh, that image that I developed among my friends and reputation where everybody like me and I'm, I'm this popular individual. It's in the rear view mirror. 
When we surrender our rights, walk in the spirit, the flesh. When we don't surrender our rights, the flesh gets up for him. But it is not the will of God that we go out like that. The greatest weapon in our warfare is obedience. Now, I, I, I just want to say this here. I really appreciate your, your patience. But I'm here to tell each and every one of you guys, God has more for us. And in God having more for us, there's some weapons that he wants to begin to manifest through all of us. So we can be that good soldiers. Facebook, thank you for chiming in. And I just appreciate every one here on this morning that made the sacrifice to press their way out. We love you with the love of the Lord. See you.